You know, we're living in a society. But they want to deliver vast amounts of information over the internet. It's, it's a series of tubes. We're supposed to act in a civilized way. Allison, can you explain what internet is? Welcome. <laughs> What's up, you guys? Welcome back to Indirect Message. You know, it's pretty fascinating how many relationship communities there are online these days. There's a place for literally everyone. There are communities about online dating, LGBT dating, dating for asexuals, divorcees, poly couples, and of course, in the manosphere, there's pickup artists, MGTOW, incels, and so on. But there's only one I can think of that unapologetically caters to the dating experiences of straight women. They describe themselves as the most ruthless female-only space on the internet. It's called the female dating strategy. Despite nearly constant backlash, especially on Reddit, it is a wildly popular subreddit and growing fast. So today, I'm very excited to have Lilith, Roe, and Savannah, three of the ladies who founded it, to discuss the female dating strategy. I found our conversation incredibly thought-provoking, and I hope you do too. Our tagline is the most ruthless female only place on the internet, which you can't take credit for. It was actually uh, coined by a writer from Mel Magazine. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Which we adopted. <laughs> Philosophy behind female dating strategy is if you think back thousands of years, we know what patriarchy looks like. We know that patriarchy affects every single part of our lives, uh, every single political organization, legal, social, economic. We know what that looks like. The next frontier that female dating strategy is trying to accomplish is what would it what does it look like to really prominently focus on the things that would benefit and uplift women and not in a lip servicey girl power girl boss way but in a real structural analysis way meaning we go after and we critique legal structures some of our social cultural mores specifically a lot of times mainstream media And we discuss how some of the common ideas that are being pushed by our culture are actually not benefiting women and then come up with new ideas that we think will actually be more in alignment with what we think the average woman, quote unquote, would benefit from. Mm -hmm. Can you give me an example? Yeah. Um, Well, we (laughs) we go after liberal feminism a lot. Yeah, Uh, yeah, yeah, you do. (laughs) Um, And a lot of it a lot of it has to do with. the prominence of them pushing sex positivity without any type of critique that often lends itself to promoting ideas around uh, porn and sex that are ultimately unhealthy for both consumers, users, and partners of porn users, right? Mm -hmm. Because porn is so often very abusive and degrading to women. Um, They push a lot of things uh, around BDSM and kink, and, and they're increasingly pushing that on younger and younger girls and then framing that as this is an empowering choice um we've critiqued things like teen vogue cosmo allure we just did bonus content we were talking about how cosmo and allure allure was were uh basically giving sex advice that was prioritizing men's need to watch porn or uh men's need to explore kink and then almost like having this attitude like as as women we're supposed to sexually accommodate men all of the time right Mm. rather than focusing on what do you want first right instead of just it being almost like the inverse of conservatism where (laughs) conservatism is is often repressive to to female sexuality because they want you to explore nothing but on the other side of the liberal feminist side it feels like they don't critique any of the sexual um culture at all and then so many and then so many times it ends up uh becoming an abusive system because you push girls into sexuality that is often degrading to them and then frame it as empowering and they're they're the ones absorbing out of the consequences to this to that behavior without any type of support yeah or even kind of like shaming uh, a woman if she might have an issue with it um is something i've noticed like you're not allowed to really critique in sex positive spheres and i say this as a pretty sex positive person this um media environment where we're constantly upping the ante upping the 
extremity and shock factor. Um, you know, we do that in the media, news media, anyway. Mm -hmm. Apply that to porn. I mean, we need to talk about that, right? Yeah. Got to a point where things like choking or strang or as more accurately, strangulation is normal during yeah. sex. Like so many of our members tell us that, you know, they've the first time sleeping with a guy, he just like puts his hands on her neck and starts strangling yeah. her. And she, they didn't even talk about it, you know. Women die from that, okay? Yeah. Do you think part of the problem is maybe we're focusing too much on the sex acts and not enough on how we talk about sex and how we can negotiate sex, sexual boundaries with each other? I think women are shamed out of having boundaries mm -hmm, for, mm -hmm. you know, since we're children, right? We're taught that we need to be nice and polite and accommodating and put other people's needs before our own and you know, to be endlessly self-sacrificial. And I think that creates, it makes it really challenging to have conversations about boundaries when, you, you know, I, I used to be very, you know, liberal feminist, right? And so it was very frustrating. Sometimes I'd have conversations with boyfriends where I'd say like, oh, I, I don't want to do this or I want to do this. And feeling like when I try to communicate with them, it's just like hitting a brick wall, right? And they think I'm the abnormal one for not wanting to accommodate them. Mm. and it's just it's really child when you're engaging in heterosexual relationships there's that gendered power dynamic that is kind of under the surface and it's not always easy to identify or explain and here's the thing like even men who I'm a socialist right like politically I'm pretty left wing and I have dated men who are socialists and I find that a lot of socialist men are very manipulative and will like um use your value system against you like oh you want to be open-minded don't you mm. oh you want to be um you don't want to kink shame me do you or you know we need to break down like you know barriers and fight repression and stuff like that don't you kind of thing there was mm -hmm. even a tiktok of this guy who was like uh shaming women for not uh, having sex with him on his frameless bed <laughs> yeah. like i thought you were a socialist oh, yeah I you remember were that one <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like classes to expect them to have bed to frames, have a bed like, frame. Yeah. <laughs> and and so what what I my my point being that like the in terms of what FDS is for, we are about maximizing female benefit above all else because we live in a world that is so male focused and so male centric that as a woman when you try to enter when you try to negotiate with patriarchy in a way where you're trying to be fair and you're trying to be like 50 50 and so on it's always going to get skewed in favor of the man like we mm. women need someone in their corner who will fight for them who will put them first and that's what fds is for mm -hmm. just a very unapologetic 100 percent about yeah. the woman yeah, yeah because that, if that, that makes sense yeah. To reiterate what, what Lilith is saying is like for the past 10 years, the online space has been flooded with this manosphere stuff, right? Mm -hmm. It is relentless. It is everywhere. It is on every platform. And while there's there's not really been much of a response, there's sort of like an, in the media, there's sort of like a passive acknowledgement like, oh, these guys are misunderstood or these guys, you know, they just need it's to. It's weirdly sympathetic to people right. like incels, <laughs> you know? weirdly sympathetic and so i think for us we've seen that the conversation but we've seen that over time because they're not like they're not actually um i think really addressing the root cause of misogyny with the kind of critique that we think is necessary to provide women with a space to fight back a bit against this kind of stuff right it's just it's just sort of a passive acceptance that this is the way sometimes that men are so i think for us you know, our big struggle and our big like goal is to create narratives that are pro-female enough that, you know, you don't find that there's so much media creep towards the Manosphere side, because I've actually seen now major publications start to print ideas that came from the Manosphere as if these are sort of given fact. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that they've been really, really successful in pushing these ideas into the mainstream without critique. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah. And even when you're dating men nowadays, it's like, even guys who are supposedly not red pillars or supposedly not active on the manosphere. I mean, they could be secretly, you have no way of knowing that, but supposedly they're just like normie guys. A lot of them will do things like, you know, negging or uh, dread game, which is where they try to make it seem like they're in high demand. And like, if you don't do what they want, they're just going to like, you know, they try to instill feelings of uh, insecurity and anxiety and 
in the woman to make her more compliant. Mm-hmm. Um, normalizing you know, sex on the third date. Normalizing sex on the first That's date. That's weird to me. Too. Normalizing right. sex without a date. Like, it's like, yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, you expect dinner first? You prudish, like, conservative? <laughs> And the you sad should... part is there's been a lot of women and we, we just had a, a, a TikTok influencer who went viral for talking about how she doesn't do walk dates. There's been a lot of women who would otherwise call themselves feminists or who, who are otherwise prominent female voices who also like pile on and shame women for having any kind of requirement for them for the dates that they go mm-hmm. on with men. Mm-hmm. So it's like everybody from the manosphere to so-called feminists, generally liberal feminists, liberal feminists and yeah. conservatives have been like piling on women for having any type of standard Mm -hmm. to which we expect men to treat us. Even if it's like all everybody's invested on making sure women's standards aren't too high. And we're saying, no, you're allowed to have whatever standard you want. And we're never going to shame you. Even if you, you know, we're never going to shame any woman for asserting anything she feels that she needs to have a successful relationship. And what's funny is even liberal feminists will complain that the bar is really low for men. You know, they'll be like, why is the bar so low for men? But then we'll shit on any woman who tries to raise the bar. You know, I I get the desire to be fair and and wanting to be uh, not wanting to be seen as like one of those mean bad girls or whatever. Right. But sometimes you have to be willing to be a little bit mean. You have to be willing to get your hands dirty if you want to change things. So this this all sounds very feminist to me. Um, obviously not liberal feminist, considering your critiques of the liberal feminist philosophy. Mm-hmm. Um, what school of feminism would you say female dating strategy embodies or it or multiple schools, maybe? There's lots of different philosophies out there um, about how do women organize themselves? What kinds of political things should we fight for? What kinds of things in our relationships should we fight for? And I think we very deliberately uh, borrow from all of them but don't commit to any of them because we're a strategy. I feel like there is merit to a lot of these different schools of thought but for our purposes we look at it like what's going to be the best strategic position to be in in our current culture mm-hmm. rather than like you know some some lofty long-term goal for like a complete restructuring of society aka something sure, like radical yeah. feminism right? It's It's kind of like incidentally feminist in a sense. Yeah. Yeah, I will say that our analysis of the world or our, um, you know, in terms of like class consciousness and so on is is very radical feminist. But I, I we we do. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm a radical feminist, but I'm sure a lot of radical feminists don't think I'm a radical feminist, as you know, we had with our most recent podcast episode about where we critique some of the like sacred cows in radical feminism. Like what? Like, you know, separatism, for example. And I know everyone says, like, you know, not all radical feminists are are female separatists or political lesbians and stuff. And that's true. Like, you can be, you know, a separate, you can be a radical feminist and not be a separatist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, But at the same time there, we did get a lot of separatists in our comment section. What's wrong with you? Like, why are you still dating men kind of thing? And it's (laughs) it's just like, well, being straight would be one reason. Yeah. Or yeah. Be, yeah. Or, or, and, and with that, the idea that we would ever do anything that would be attractive to men, right? Uh, you know, yeah, the other anti- thing is beauty standards. standards. Yeah. yeah. We don't, um, I mean, I, first of all, like I acknowledge that like when I do beauty standard stuff, yeah, I'm participating in patriarchy and so on, but I'm not going to like, um, you know, stop shaving or stop wearing makeup and that kind of stuff because with FDS, we see it through the lens of risk versus reward. So um, the risk of wearing things like, you know, light makeup and shaving is relatively lower risk than say things like plastic surgery. So we're against things like, you know, BBLs, which have a very high mortality rate. B- um, sorry, what? Uh, Brazilian, uh, Brazilian butt, butt lift. What is that? Uh, Brazilian, it's, oh my it's gosh. Like, it's, the it's, things it's, the Kardashians it's, have. It's, it's basically a procedure where they suck all the fat out of your stomach and then put it in yeah, your butt. Yeah, to make your bum bigger. I think it's even like, because it's so dangerous, surgeons in the UK refuse to do it. So oh people God. who get it done, they have to travel. And there is often um, a really, really high risk of it going wrong. Um, the the tissue in in the buttocks is like is like literally rotting, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a really, wow. really... Blood flow. Yeah. It's a really, 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 it's a really, really high risk procedure. That's hard. Um, it's at like a one in and... 3,000 mortality rate. So yeah, we're against yeah. like high risk things like, you know, a lot of the beauty standard stuff 
that's being pushed nowadays, especially with, you know, Instagram and so on is very dangerous. So we're against, and we're against women, you know, even things like, you know, filler, nose jobs, like why waste your money on that? Like, I mean, if you want to get that, we're not going to police them or shame them. Um, And that's the other thing is like, you know, we used to get a, a lot of comments whenever a woman would post a picture where she's putting on makeup, there's always comments like, you know, she's complicit in the patriarchy. And it's like, we don't police women's right. gender so it's, expression. It's hard because it's so cultural. Yeah, it gets a uh, kind of nanny, like telling people. It's very what antagonistic. To do. Yeah. And, and kind of taking away people's agency. Um, from what I can tell, you're kind of you're basically saying there's nothing wrong with wanting to look hot for your partner, but you shouldn't like compromise your safety and well being and yeah. wallet to do exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm you ultimate. should demand equal reciprocation. That's the other conversation there. Right? We it's want like, men to be hot for us too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. It's so, so lopsided now where it. only nah. women are expected to. Be. I mean, yeah, men have like beauty standards in terms of like they want to be buff and stuff like i guess but it's very lopsided right now and we're trying to like make bring the standards for women maybe a little bit lower in terms of not doing like the plastic surgery stuff and then raise the bar for men raise it Mm. way up way Way up (laughs) because some of the messages women are getting nowadays it's like oh dad bods are hot and like you know you shouldn't care if a guy doesn't meet your physical standards and looks don't matter and it's like but it's dishonest too right it's I, I feel like a lot of these studies and we talk about this on the subreddit too it's like some of these studies are just made by <laughs> men who want to justify yeah. they want to just put an idea out in the culture but don't want to seem like they're incels so they just say I've scientifically proven that women prefer short men with pot bellies <laughs> or, or, I, can remember, I, I can remember there was a post on the subreddit saying um i'm gonna investigate if the female orgasm actually exists in like a really a really long and convoluted way of him basically saying i've never made a woman come before um because but yeah he was just because he can't physically see it that was his argument he was wondering if it even if it even exists at all um so and I think I remember the most controversial in quotation marks um post on the subreddit was about how dick size matters it wasn't oh, yeah. even saying that that big dicks are the best dicks because obviously everybody has a different preference but it was just saying that that women should take into account um the size of their partner's penis because it will have an impact on on their sexual pleasure which is you know standard right that's why that's why dildos come in all sorts of different sizes Mm. but but reddit had an absolute meltdown and the (laughs) poor poster who wrote that post she was getting death Death threats threats, getting essays um it got it got posted to all of like the um the it got posted to all the subreddits for men who um have issues with their dick size and they were all having a meltdown over it it literally just exploded and that was purely for saying um that women are allowed to have preferences for their male partner's anatomy. And it wasn't even saying, like, you have to have this particular preference or you have to have that. It was just saying it's okay to have a preference. And, you know, that was really interesting to me because if you look at a place like Reddit, there is a subreddit for absolutely every single part of a woman's body. If you want to look at a subreddit know, just, for, yeah. like, just for nipples, you'll find it. If you want to look mm-hmm. at a subreddit just for, like, the size of your vagina you'll find it like or the but, shape of your vagina like or the shape yeah. of the, the, it's different like, hair color different you know or even yeah. feet whatever but the minute a woman says i prefer tall men or um or this particular dick size it's all about how shallow we are and how you know how we all mean bitches for not you know for having preferences mm-hmm. so that was quite stark i think mm-hmm. yeah they're busy vomiting and crying <laughs> 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 to yeah. this day they're probably still doing it. <laughs> they're still raging about that it's, yeah it's very upsetting what you're saying to some people and i've experienced some of this when i would talk about feminism you know people would just get so mad at any assertion of a female perspective that it mattered that it mattered as much as men's um would you chalk that up to just sort of a patriarchal conditioning where we're just sort of viscerally upset at women asserting what they want and their boundaries? I think it's male socialization. Like the way women are brought up from 
we're pretty much from the time we're fertilized almost we are <laughs> taught to believe that we are not good enough our bodies are picked apart um the way we if we can cook or not is picked apart um you know the way we study is picked apart like everything about our lives is picked apart and we grow up thinking that I'm not good enough whereas with mm-hmm. men I believe they are socialized differently to just expect a wife and kids and a family to materialize when they want one and now that things like FDS are teaching women that we don't have to settle for any man that comes along, that these men who I remember someone actually had a good a good quote one time on the subreddit, and it was something like that the particular concept of a marriage is essentially affirmative action for men. Essentially, men oh, yeah. were <laughs> I, mean, I mean essentially like men have been able to get married with with absolutely no effort on their part because it was because like women were demonized if they were single. So to avoid the ostracism and also to because of economic you know reasons and for financial Mm -hmm. reasons because you know let's not forget that women couldn't get a bank account until the 1970s in their own name they had to get married they had no choice but now those barriers women are removed a lot of these men are now finding that they that their access to pussy is also drying up as well (laughs) And, and and this is why this is why female dating strategy gets so much backlash. So many men have let it slip that the reason why that they detest our ideology isn't because that we're wrong or that that what we're saying about the nature of men isn't true. Um, they've said it's because well, if it spreads, it's going to make um, it's essential. I'm going to have to put in more effort, and it's going to make my dating life more difficult. That's literally yeah, they what straight up said. admitted they that. Like, they admitted they it. right, but they just don't want us to spread because we're effective. Because gonna, this is guys on Reddit that have said this? Yes, they've yeah, said wow. this. Like, it, it was because like, FDS also has like about 10 satellite subs that are dedicated to just ripping apart everything that we say. So yeah. people will literally, when they're fed up with FDS, they'll go and make like an FDS hate sub and they'll all, con- <laughs> <laughs> and they'll all congregate there. It sounds as silly as it sounds. Yeah. And a lot of these men- <laughs> Yeah, Reddit is weird. Said, a lot, <laughs> a lot of these men have said the reason why I hope FDS doesn't spread is because it's going to affect my dating life. Basically, saying that they don't want to have to put in the effort that FDS requires mm-hmm. in order to attract a woman. Mm, wow, that's quite the admission. Yeah, I mean, we knew it all along, but I like when men say the quiet part out loud. It's (laughs) really helpful. Because you're like, (laughs) yes, I knew it. I knew it. That's what I was saying when I read it. It was like, I knew it. Our self-aware wolves. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So a lot of this sounds like uh, the result of maybe some broken, like, gender relations between men and women. Do you think this is a relatively recent crack, I guess, crack in the pavement that is relationships, marriage, sex? Is this a new thing? Is that why FDS is appealing now? Feminism has made so much progress in terms of the law, in terms of, you know, economic opportunities for women. Um, I think the last forefront of female empowerment is dating and relationships. I think that's Mm -hmm. the one area we've kind of lagged behind. And I think, I think if anything, Mm -hmm. it's the one area that has, it's almost like that is the area where um, misogyny has had a backlash to try and shove women down even more, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, with things like things like, you know, 50, 50 dating um, sounds great in in theory. And there's a lot of women and a lot of feminists who think that they're, it's like a flex on the patriarchy to pay for their men. And you know, what they don't realize is that, you know, yes, like we might think of this as something that is beneficial to us, but men don't see it that way. They, they see 50, 50 women as like suckers essentially. And they they use that as an opportunity to multi-date or date a lot of women or to put less effort into relationships. And so that's why we have rules. Like, and a lot of people think this is very patriarchal because we say, you know, men should pay for dates because it's a way of showing investment. It's a way of them um, that, that's really, it just comes down to in, investment actually. And so, um, there's a lot of assumptions around like, oh, like, well, if he pays for dates, then he has like financial control over you. And it's like, no, that's why as a woman, you're supposed to have your own you know, job and be financially independent. So you have the option to walk away. Don't be, um, reliant on a man, but he should spend money to show that he's serious. Right. To put that in a context, uh, what she was saying about how, uh, to keep men from just like looking at women like suckers a lot of that came from the red pill and they were 
talking about the fact that they were quote unquote spinning plates, which means they would date a lot of women at once and try and the to women would all pay all for it. Like the women and, yeah, were and the way they can do that is because most of time. these guys are broke is that they would they would take advantage of the 50 50 system or they would try to get women to pay for it. Um, mm. yeah. Sorry, is the 50 50 system where women pay their own way or or where she she pulls out her wallet and offers like where she pays for, pays for the whole thing? Yeah. Or yeah. And and with that, um, we talk a lot about, and I think this has been a big uh, discussion in mainstream media right now, especially with the pandemic, all the unpaid labor me- women do, all of the child care, all of the elder care, all of the family care, yeah. all of obviously like the actual reproduction itself, um, all of the household management, all of those things fall on women more often than not. And the pandemic has really made that clear, especially when so many women had to quit their jobs to take care of people because, you know, they couldn't get childcare anymore or they had sick relatives. I want to say it was like 100% of the losses had been women's jobs. Yep. Which is absolutely Mm -hmm. crazy. We like to think of ourselves as this enlightened, you know, forward thinking society. And yet here we have one crisis and it's immediately women that are put on the back burner. And I don't think... I think a lot of like women who were happy, I guess, with the 50-50 arrangement, they finally realised how unfair it was mm-hmm. when um, both herself and her partner were at home. They were working from home and she was still doing all the childcare, all the homeschooling. Mm-hmm. I think it really, I, I mean, didn't they say that divorces were going to spike over COVID? Because mm-hmm. a lot of women, they finally realised that 50-50, like Rowan and Lilith said, is a complete scam it doesn't benefit women um, and it doesn't take into account, like Rose said, the unpaid labour that women do, mm-hmm. that even when men have the opportunity to do their fair share, they still choose not to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what's so bizarre to me is a lot of feminists will go on and on about the unpaid, unpaid labour that women do, um, but then also really have a problem with us when we try to monetize that or have vetting strategies to vet for men that do that. Like it's not the vetting that you need to do to get a man like that is not nice. And that that's the thing. They don't like that. We're not nice about it or that mm, like, to, virtue- to find a man who's going to step up, step, step up, up to the plate in that kind of situation. They think like, oh, if you just like pay 50 50 and like virtue signal and talk to him and communicate forever, then then you'll find the kind of man that will be able to put in that kind of work. And what's been very clear, especially in this pandemic, is like, no, the way that you guys are going about this is not actually helping or proving things. Like, you mm-hmm. need to start making these requirements up front and forcing them to invest a lot more up front with the understanding that later on that investment that investment is on your part is going to either is going to trump theirs if they're not actually actively working on doing that kind of management and putting in that kind of labor up front but they think it's mean when we all of our vetting strategies to weed for men like that are unpopular because it it, they are they are gendered meaning it's not like a it's we don't go into relationships thinking like oh men and women are exactly the same and like we both work the same kind of job so we should split everything 50 50 we go in and we say probably men are not going to be good at this (laughs) right Mm. so you have to adjust your expectations and start to date as if you need a more investment from men understanding that they are not they are likely not going to do as much right is it healthy to assume the worst? I I don't know if it's like I mean, is it healthy to go into things with an idealistic mindset? And no, not but there, there's probably <laughs> an in between there, right? Like yeah, I, yeah. I fully understand what you're saying. And I think practically it probably pans out. When I actually go out and date, I don't assume the worst. Like when I'm when I'm actually interacting with men, I'm not like this like angry feminist and stuff. Like on FDS, we really I think just because women are trained to idealize men I think you really need to have the harsh truth of what some men are like yeah not all men are like this but a lot of them are and um I think it's helpful for women to go into it with a realistic mindset because when you go into it with an idealistic mindset men are going to take advantage of you we're hardcore right. so maybe a little more skeptical yeah. at the outset like a healthy skepticism of men yeah, there, there's a there's a fine line there, I think. I think what helps, though, is having, um, because like when I started dating after coming across FDS, what helped me a lot was to have 
um, a list of boundaries and basically standards and deal breakers. So Mm -hmm. it isn't like you're assuming the worst, but you'll know, okay, you know, what will, you know, make me walk away, you know, straight away if he does this or, okay, what can I be a bit more flexible on? Um, And then having that in mind as well can help um, you to, to toe that line because, because yeah, you're right. I think it is a very, very fine line to toe, but, but ultimately, I think the idea of self-preservation, especially for women, is also equally important, given the fact, as we've already touched on this episode, that women are not taught to have any boundaries in dating, and they're taught to give, especially men, the endless benefit of the doubt, even when they really shouldn't. Um, so When he hasn't earned it? Well, when he hasn't earned it, and it's... <sighs> or even when he's actively betrayed it. Yeah, I, yeah, I think exactly. I saw a post on the subreddit today or yesterday or something about a woman who had found CP on her partner's computer and was seriously yeah, wondering I, whether or not this was a you know breakup offense. Yeah, I'm what praying. The, what I'm the praying. Fuck? That's crazy I'm, to me. I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> praying. I'm praying. What? To, I'm praying to all the gods that that was fake because she was yeah. like, he's a great father, but he's a narcissist and hasn't worked. I was like, that should have been like strike number eight, and then she wanted the child porn. <laughs> And I was like, yeah. what the fuck? I mean, you see that on on posts all the time. Like, am I am I the asshole or on all the relationships? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love my boyfriend or my husband. He's such a great guy, but also he like, you know, leaves shit stains on the bed and doesn't <laughs> do the dishes and calls me a stupid bitch whenever we argue. So, you know, how do I communicate with him to blah 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 blah? It's like I hear that stop being so goddamn optimistic, okay? You need yeah. to have a little bit of realism. But yeah, it's it's a, a gradual uh, softening of these kinds of boundaries or questioning of these kinds of boundaries for women that contribute to what we call like pick culture, which is that everybody's invested, including quote unquote feminist media and forcing women to, to second guess themselves about their sexual boundaries. Mm-hmm. I have noticed that. I, I did want to talk to you a little bit about, so FDS, the community seems very unapologetically let's say non-queer right most most of the feminist spaces that i've been involved in that talks talk about sexuality or dating it does typically go to the queer side of things sex gender sexual orientation would you describe fds as queer in any way or i mean i'm wondering if the unapologetic focus on the straight cis female experience is part of the popularity we had a moderate we have a moderate who's bisexual and she's written about how heterosexual and homosexual relationships are different and how when you know there needs to be a conversation with heterosexual relationships specifically because of that gendered power dynamic that's not to say there isn't like domestic violence in gay or lesbian relationships i'm sure there definitely is but it's not in the same way and it doesn't have the same Called, you know, inherent power dynamic as when a man and a woman are alone together. It's different because the gender and sex of the people are different. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's, it's more or less that it's that like, you know, it, again, it's our subreddit. So it just started, it started out of just like a, a bunch of random women, pretty much straight women coming together, coming up with an idea about how to date men. And we do have quite a few like lesbian or queer or bisexual women on the subreddit. But I think like Lilith said, we focus pretty, we focus exclusively on, or like almost exclusively on the dynamics between men and women, because first of all, most women are straight, but also because uh, those, that in particular comes with specific cultural baggage that is probably very, very different from queer or lesbian relationships. Yeah. And there's subreddits for specifically for uh queer dating and stuff so yeah. th- you know we're, we're we're cool with that we just think that you know we there needs to be a space where we address specifically straight women's needs because of that gendered power dynamic so the core principles do you guys kind of are those still a thing <laughs> the six core principles like be a high uh, value woman and and so on yeah it's been a while since i've been on Reddit. hold on let, let me refresh you let me refresh oh you <laughs> there are a couple that i've i've thought were kind of interesting and deserved more of a parsing out the second one that most men are not of value to you because they want to use you for sex let's just talk about that one for a sec because I think it's very disempowering to men to say men want to use you for sex because it it 
A affirms maybe that impulse to put sex first. It says, this is the normal thing. And so, you know, maybe more people are going to do it. I mean, a lot of men do want to use women for sex. We so. just think, we feel like we're saying the quiet part out loud. I mean, the- <laughs> that's- you, feel, you feel like overwhelmingly men just want sex? Well, it's not even just sex. Some of it's power, right? Or okay. uh, a lot of it has to do with the fact that so many, so often when you have interactions with men, probably a large portion will press for sex, expect sex, kind of uh, try to coerce sex, try to backhand nice guy their way into sex. And a lot of that is pretty inherent in a lot of the interactions you have with men, you know, maybe outside of a professional setting, but sometimes even within a professional setting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, The idea being that, yeah, this is something you have to be aware of that a lot of men don't necessarily go in. A lot of men don't go into interacting with women like, oh, I want a relationship with her. Yeah. Are, are there men out there who are good men who are looking for a loving, you know, mutualistic, happy relationship? For sure. Is that the majority of men? No. Um, mm. But even for okay. men who are looking for relationships, at least in my personal experience, because my dating history has just been like back to back long term monogamous relationships. A lot of them, mm-hmm. it's like they're just looking for a pussy subscription. They, they, you know, they just, for whatever reason, you know, aren't that successful with, you know, hookup culture. And so, um, at least when they have a girlfriend, they'll, they'll get, they, they, uh, get regular sex or they want the other benefits that come with a relationship with a woman. So things like emotional labor, you know, cooking, cleaning, domestic labor, and so on. Mm. I think women are right to be skeptical of men. And men, because a lot of men do use women and exploit women or, you know, outsource a lot of their emotional labor, domestic labor and so on to women. And so I think mm-hmm. women are right to be skeptical of that. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any doubt that there are men like that, even many men like that. What I question is whether it's a majority. In my work, the majority of men that I've encountered want relationships and feel like the world is telling them you need to be sex first. If you're not prioritizing sex or having a lot of sex, you're failing as a man. Mm -hmm. And so there's a really strong social narrative that men are up against. And so maybe that does make more men prioritize sex. But I just wonder if that might reinforce the message. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, men like that, we'd probably call them high value men. Like we can, we do distinguish between like different types of men. So like high value men are men who do want relationships who are compassionate to women who um who behave honorably who behave honorably and so on so yeah like are there men out there who are like that for sure and you know in terms of um women reinforcing this cultural narrative i mean we didn't create that like we We didn't that's reinforced by men yeah that's the thing about that so when they say that because because the other truth to me is like if that were the majority of men then we would not need dating strategies right like that's just the reality like just just numbers wise we'd all be paired off and it would be like it'd be smooth sailing right if the majority (laughs) of men were sort of putting in the mental emotional physical sexual work to be a good partner the problem is, is that there seems to be a lot more men on the side that we're talking about where they are so about their pro sex, low emotional investment, low investment mm-hmm. in relationships. They look at women as like a service worker to them. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so that's fair enough. And, that's fair and, enough. And, and this isn't to say that the men who want relationships um, and, you know, the men who run through women through sex are different people. A man can, they often say, I want to have kids eventually, but that also won't stop them from essentially using women who they know they don't see a future with in the meantime until they feel they're ready to settle down. So sometimes, and, you know, we often say that also just because a guy's relationship, you know, minded, that doesn't mean that you should stop vetting because you want to make sure that he's with you for the right reasons and not mm-hmm. just, he's not using you as a passing you know, time can so like core is like a stepping stone or a placeholder. So a lot of guys will stay with a woman, even if they're not that crazy about her, um, just because, you know, she makes his life more convenient, basically. Mm, and yeah. so that's what we're pushing back on is, you know, he you basically want to be with a guy who is either crazy about you and wants to marry you or not at all. Because if you wait, you know, don't waste years of your life with a guy who you know, has one foot out the door or is like thinking that he can do better or doesn't see you as marriage mirror. Yeah. 
or who yeah. doesn't see you as marriage material because mm-hmm. men mm-hmm. think if they don't pump like pump and dump you as per se like that they are not one of the bad guys but like stringing a woman along and just like using like not we call really those forever girlfriends forever girlfriends yeah it's just as bad and that we would also consider that to be a guy that's primarily motivated by convenient sex right mm-hmm. he's just too he's just too lazy than he's lazier than the other guys than to go keep getting new sex right <laughs> <laughs> So it it sounds like, I guess, this uh, expectation that you're setting forth that's maybe a little bit more of a pessimistic expectation is meant to put women in a state of mind that helps them more easily identify some of the red flags in relationships. That sounds fair. Yeah. 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 I don't know if I'd call it pessimistic. I'd say it's more realistic. Yeah, but, we really think yeah. this is realistic. But pessimists love to say, I'm not a pessimist, I'm a realist. Like, so. <laughs> pessimists would be like, hang up and give up and, you know. The other time. thing that was a lot of men who are actually like truly good men and not just paying lip service to them, to, you know, being a good man. Like some men, they consider themselves good or they want to be seen as good, but they aren't actually good. But for men that actually are good, a lot of men like that do acknowledge like that most men are trash. Right. Like the men that I've, the men that I've talked to who are actually decent people, when I say things like oh, men are trash, they'll usually like laugh along and be like, ha ha. Yeah. Like most guys are trash. There isn't the defensiveness. Yeah. They, they know that they're not one of them. So it doesn't make them defensive. Right. But guys who are trash will usually be like, not all men. And like, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you make of the people who call this? I have to ask you guys about this because it comes up so often. Who call FDS the incel philosophy for women or the fem cell <laughs> philosophy I, mean, um, I disagree with I mean, that <laughs> for a number of reasons but i'm curious what I mean, you think well, so, i mean well some of us are in relationships myself included so <laughs> by definition that excludes a lot of us and you know that some of you know a lot of our users are married in relationships and if you're talking about involuntary celibate again the um the the phrasing doesn't apply because it's it's an voluntary. incel is somebody <laughs> who can't get sex. A vol cell might be more accurate, but uh-huh. if any if any woman on the subreddit wanted to get sex, all they'd have to do is to lower their standards and swipe a few times on Tinder, and then there you go. It may not be very good, but it isn't a lack of sex that is... Um, Your motivation. Yeah, that's our biggest problem because we don't see, for example, like on, for example, on like the red pill, you'll see them trying to strategize how to get sex or how mm-hmm. to get a woman to give them a blowjob. You don't see that on FDS. We're not here saying, OK, here's how to manipulate a guy into eating you out. We don't do that because <laughs> sex is not our biggest concern. <laughs> I, I think it's just men projecting again, right? Because yeah. for them, when you look at, I, I actually, this is actually a pet peeve of mine. I really, really, really hate the intellectual laziness when it comes to female dating strategy because they just always try to frame us in terms of the manosphere. And so yeah, they always get it Yeah, instead of recognizing that we're our own thing, they're, oh, they're just the female equivalent of incels. Oh, they're just the female equivalent of the red pill. It's like, we are our own separate thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And and for men, they see it like the reason they think that is because they think like, oh, we can't get really for the incels. Their problem is they can't get dating and sex and they're not a, they are, quote unquote, not attractive enough, according to them, to get women, to get relationships, to get sex. So they think that we're complaining because we can't get relationships and we can't get sex. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's not what we are doing. We are talking about a culture of like. Uh, the relationships and the quality of men being such that it is often not beneficial to us. And that's like, that's like a culture ride problem and less about like us not being able to get the men that are available or even the men that like the men that they would consider high value, meaning like attractive men or men who have money or men who are like, you know, captains of their industry or whatever. Like when they call us FDS female insults, they just don't get it. Like a lot of guys will comment on FDS and say like, this subreddit won't help women get dates. And it's like, that's not what we're for. We're not right. about yeah. strategizing about how to dates. get, it's not about getting dates. We don't struggle to get dates. It's about that, you know, how do you manage the dates that you do get? Um, and, and the other thing is like, I've noticed that what we consider a high value man and what men consider a high value man is very different. Yeah. Um, a lot of men think that, you know, I mean, there are women who desire men who are like wealthy or have a big penis or who are tall and so on. But those are the three traits that, men tend to hyper fixate on um with women there's more than just absolute wealth and like height and penis size 
you know, we, we consider a high value, like if, if a guy has all of those things, but he's abusive, we consider him low value. Yeah. Um, but guys, men seem to think that like the dark triad types, like narcissists, sociopaths, psychopaths, they consider those high value. They, mm. they call those alpha men or chads or whatever. Right. And they aspire to be like them, but women see that and we're like, no, that's not what we want. Like, you know, men tend to idolize a type of, and try to emulate a type of man that a lot of women just don't find attractive. What I mean, this high value, low value thing. I mean, do you see any issue with putting people into these, into sorting them into categories? Or do you feel like that's just the most effective way to talk about a cluster of traits? It's subreddit shorthand, right? It's like, it's really hard to keep talking. Like every subreddit has its own shorthand eventually yeah, yeah. because it's really, really hard to keep like re- like regurgitating the same like ideas at once so the idea is just literally like take an analysis it's almost like you're just doing a pros and cons list and looking at what is this person bringing to my life versus what they're actually actively subtracting from my life or at least robbing me from future or current opportunities and Mm -hmm. that's just the way that we approach it because again strategy right we're looking at the risk reward and then also the cost benefit all right so is the goal of all this conversation and of these strategies that you're laying out is the goal to get married like what's what's kind of the end point that you're offering to people i think it depends on the person um yeah we don't like we say if it benefits you to get married I think most women do want to get married but you know we're not like we're not married to the idea of marriage uh-huh. <laughs> That's fair. but like I think mo- the average person I think the average woman it probably lends towards marriage because I think the average woman does look towards that but there's plenty of, of women who are divorced and they're just looking for a more uh like not not as much of a committed relationship especially if they have like smaller kids and they're like i'm not ready to move another guy in with me and my kids or if they're just divorced and they're older and they Mm -hmm. just want to find a companion to do things with like it to us is the the end goal is successful relationships that's a wrap my dears if you'd like to learn more about their philosophy and community do check out the female dating strategy podcast Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.